everyone, my name is Jemima and welcome to today's bookish video. I wanted to share with you guys three books I recently finished on Audible that have really changed my life because they've impacted my perspective. They've either reinforced some of the ideas I've been thinking about or just shown me a new way to think in general. The books I want to share with you today are The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, Zakora by Chimanda Ngozi Adeche and Harry Potter by J.K. Rowling. All right, let's discuss how I am so late to this Harry Potter party. However, I'm a big fan. I'm obsessed now. And I'm just like, Dumbledore is a go, greatest of all time. Severus Snape, why? Sort me into Gryffindor House, please. And Hermione Granger and Ginny Weasley are best girls. I started this whole adventure into Hogwarts at the end of January because my friend was re-watching the movies and I thought I've never seen or watched any of Harry Potter things so let me give it a try on Audible and I wasn't really expecting much I really didn't even think I'd like it but after the Philosopher's Stone at the end of January I basically finished The Deathly Hallows in just over two months and the only reason I didn't finish it sooner was because I was listening to other books. All seven books are narrated by Stephen Fry and he does a fantastic job. I enjoyed the experience more because he was reading it to me. The story literally came alive in my head in the most real way and I was transported into Hogwarts and I could see the scenes so clearly. The Harry Potter books made me think about relationships and community. One connection that Harry had with the main villain, Voldemort, is that they both saw Hogwarts as the safe place and home. It was the first place of acceptance for both of them. For me, it was reinforced an idea I've been thinking about for a while, which is where you are matters and the environment is important. Sometimes there really is nothing wrong with you and that you're just in the wrong place. Harry grew up with his aunt and uncle who were against all magical things and bullied him and absolutely treated him like dirt. He spent his whole childhood starved from love and he didn't know what was inside of him. However, when he started attending Hogwarts, my boy began to flourish. Confidence entered the chat. Laughter became a second language and adventure found him. However, there's only so much a good place can do and sometimes the problem is you. Voldemort had the same opportunity as Harry to be in this good place, but his heart was too cold and closed off. Instead of genuine growth, he was about power and control. He was obsessive and he used people. This made me be even more intentional about healing my soul. If I'm not working on myself and dealing with past hurt, it can block me from receiving good things. I hope to share more about my thoughts on Harry Potter in another video after I've watched the movies as I would like to compare the movie and the books and just also talk in more detail about the characters and storyline because I have a lot to say about Harry Potter. Huge fan, huge. The next book I want to share with you guys today is Zakora by Jamanda Negozia Dejo and this was actually my first book on Audible. I got this because I saw that she had released a new original for Amazon. This was a short story Amazon original and I can only get it on ebook or Audible and I can't do ebooks because they hurt my eyes. So my only other option was Audible and I purchased it, I loved it and I'm obsessed with the app now basically. The book is humbling, it reminded me to be slow to judge and if you haven't gone through what someone else has, simply be kind. Because Zakora had some, you know, some negative thoughts about her mother, her cousin and just the way women live their lives. And in the words of Justin Bieber and Jaden Smith, never say never or say things like, that will never be me in terms of certain life decisions that can be very hard and challenging to go through. I'm choosing my words very carefully because I don't want to give you guys any spoilers. I really want you guys to get the book, listen to it and enjoy it just the way I have. But basically it just reinforced some of my thoughts that relationships are fragile, people change, sacrifices need to be made for things to be maintained and it will look different when you remember the situation. I also thought about womanhood, family and romantic love as well as Nigeria, the motherland. Now I'm going to give a trigger warning for the Midnight Library because it starts with suicide and continues to mention wanting to die throughout the whole book. There are mixed reactions to this book. People agree that it's a good book but it is a very sensitive topic and it can be overwhelming to think about the idea that Matt Haig has put forward. The main character Nora is given the opportunity to relive aspects of her life that she regrets. Nora is then told if she finds a life that she really loves, she can then make that her new life. The first takeaway from this book I get is that we can create regrets for ourselves based on what others wanted from us. And it's not even things that we wanted for ourselves. I did what I could in that situation, what was right for me. So I do not regret this memory that is coming up into my mind. This is something that I had to learn to say with my therapist. 
I could not forgive myself because of certain things, because I thought I'd let people down or because I thought everyone else was doing things in another way and there was something wrong with me. But life does not go in a straight line upwards of acceleration. There will be dips, there'll be times when nothing changes at all. However, holding on to regret is heavy and it can stifle people. There's a difference between being aware of your mistakes and fixating on regrets. I can reflect on my decisions and note when something didn't have an outcome I desired because of my actions. However, once I've acknowledged it, I need to allow myself to move forward, believing I will try and do better whenever I can. As being scared and stuck in the past, mistakes does not allow me to be present. To put it simply, be intentional about being present in the moment and live sincerely for yourself. Be kind to yourself and hug yourself. Before I end this video, I just want to share some pros and cons of Audible and I'll start with the con because I only have one, which is that if you don't like the narrator's voice, it might stop you from engaging with the book as much. I haven't had this problem, all the books I've had had great narrations. What I do is read the comments and see what the listeners are saying because sometimes the narrator's voice might not fit the story and it's not that they are bad. Moving on to the pro, the first one is that you can listen to Audible anywhere. Once you've downloaded it, you can listen to it offline. It also doesn't require a lot of concentration compared to reading. You can multitask, you can listen to it while you lay in bed, while you go full walk. And another reason I enjoy it is because it's given me the opportunity to finish books that I might have avoided such as the Harry Potter books because those books were sick. Audible has become a way for me to reconnect with books as for the past two years I've had trouble concentrating on words on a page. I even tried ebooks and looking at the screen for too long had my eyes. It honestly was taking me so long to get through books but there were so many on my list but now thanks to Audible I have been able to tick through my list very quickly. We have come to the end of the video. Those were the three books that have changed my perspective and I'm so happy I got to experience them on Audible. If you're interested in Audible there's 30 days trial and you get a free book. Let me know if you have read any of the books that I mentioned or if you have anything more to add, a comment down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.